So this is all by way of a prelude to this passage um, which is coming up next which we have to question to see what um, advantage there is to it, what benefit there is to it in our understanding of reality. Uh, and part of it is to do with this notion of reincarnation. Uh, a few years back the English coach the coach of the English football team, Glenn Hoddle, got into a spot of bother. Uh, it seems that he's got certain Hindu beliefs and uh, he made some comment about disabled people who are basically reaping the result of past karma uh, and has caused an, an outrage in the popular media. Was, uh, and he had to resign over this. His words were probably taken out of context and were blown out of all proportion, uh, as the media often does. But we have to ask ourselves about this reincarnation, since it comes up frequently in the uh, Yoga Vasishta. It's part of the Hindu context. It's not really relevant, actually. Reincarnation is an idea. And we're not concerned with ideas. You might choose to believe in that idea because you might think, well, there's, a lot, there's quite a lot of evidence for reincarnation. And um, you might decide, well, there's not enough evidence for to believe in reincarnation. There's no doubt that uh, this idea of reincarnation is quite useful at times. It's a, it's a model for thinking about things. Just as the scientists sometimes think of a, an atom as a, a miniature solar system, that's a useful model. Although scientists have given up on that model and believe that the atom is actually it's actually best not to think in terms of any model but just in terms of mathematics, which is quite interesting. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a model for thinking and we mustn't confuse any model with absolute truth. We get very passionately ident attached to our models and uh, people get very att att passionately attached to ideas like reincarnation. It's not actually relevant. All we can say is uh, that things are in flux. Things are constantly changing. We could say even um, that things are being recycled. So we don't need to dismiss it and we don't need to go along with it. And we can maybe get something useful out of thinking in terms of it, but without actually subscribing to it. So, we've just heard Vasishta talking about the sage Veda Vyasa, who's the 23rd in this stream of creation. And we're told that sages like Veda Vyasa attain embodiment and disembodiment again and again. Which kind of contradicts the basic premise of, of, of liberation from the cycle of uh, death and rebirth. Anyway, let's have a look at this passage which um, is about self-effort. Therefore, O Rama, Listen to what I'm about to say. This instruction is, to, is sure to remove the darkness of ignorance. In this world, whatever is gained is gained only by self-effort. Where failure is encountered, it is seen that there has been slackness in the effort. This is obvious. But what is called fate is fictitious and is not seen. So this section is about self-effort and about notions of fate. Fate as in the sense of, well, it's all in the hands of the gods, what can you do? So I think Vasishta here is addressing a certain issue which was possibly important at the time. Or certainly somebody's put something into the mouth of Vasishta who's concerned with certain issues. Self-effort, Rama, is that mental, verbal and physical action which is in accordance with the instructions of a holy person well versed in the scriptures. It is only by such effort that Indra became king of heaven 
that Brahma became the creator and the other deities earned their place. So this is important. Um, the deities in Hinduism may well have been spiritual be practitioners or sages at one point who then ascended to the heavens. If we remember right at the very beginning of the Yoga Vasishta, Indra is a little bit concerned about this sage who is um, uh, practicing certain austerities and he tries to entice the sage into heaven. Self-effort is of two categories, that of past births and that of this birth. The latter effectively counteracts the former. Fate is none other than self-effort of a past incarnation. There is constant conflict between these two in this incarnation, and that which is more powerful triumphs. So what, is, what, it's, what he's saying here is that with the result, everything, our present circumstances are the result of past efforts. And we, we have to make an effort now and move on. Now, I think we can accept that actually. I mean, whether it's our responsibility or not is irrelevant. We still have to move on from this situation. We have to accept everything that's brought us up to this point and then move on. We've got a genetic heritage, a genetic her heritage which comes from our parents and th from our parents, parents and so on all the way back. We've got a heritage which is part of our culture. We've got a heritage which is part of our family upbringing, part of our class, whatever. Um, these are all things which we've inherited. And whether we take responsibility for them or not uh, is another matter. It's, it's no point in saying it's all our fault because that doesn't get us anywhere. We have to move on. And this is, 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 is what the, uh, I think self-effort is about. We don't need to say, oh, it's all our fault and get into some sort of drama about that. But we do have to accept our heritage and, uh, and then move on. Now he talks about um, self-effort being behaviour which is in accordance with the instructions of a holy person well versed in the scriptures. Well we can certainly take our cue from that. Um, I don't think we should f follow blind obedience, follow, follow uh, blindly anything written in a book or anybody who proclaims himself to be a guru. So we need to be careful with this. Uh, we don't want to be accepting any absolute authority, which again though is part of the Indian Hindu tradition. Your guru was, was God incarnate and you followed your guru's instructions uh, explicitly. And that's great if you're part of that tradition. I'm not going to criticise that. But it's not part of our tradition here in the West. And there's no and it's a very suspect thing to 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 for us to regard somebody as a God incarnate and to follow them blindly. We don't do that. We don't do that. We can we can we can we can uh, look for advice, we can look for wisdom. And we, we weigh it up. And if we see it is useful for us in our present situation to follow it, then we follow it. So we cannot go along with this uh, living in accordance with scriptures and following the advice of a holy person. That's part of the Hindu cultural tradition. And um, it's not part of the Western cultural tradition.